Thank you for joining us today. This is John Griffiths, host of Disability Justice and Everyday Pursuit and Survival. Welcome. So in the studio today with me is Nico and Alan. Welcome back, guys. Uh, it's nice to see you again. And if you don't mind, we'll get started with some questions here. So who are you guys? Can I go first? Um, so this is Alan Hines. He's the director of the Real Choice Initiative, and I'm gonna do communication support for Alan. I use he him pronouns. And I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Um, uh, my name is Nico Sara. Uh, I use they pronouns. Um, I am a mostly white passing um, person of color with disabilities. I'm queer and transgender and um, I'm a disability justice organizer and I'm really excited to do this interview with you, a good friend of ours, John. Thank you so much for asking us to be here with you today. First question, what is the name of the study? <laughs> So the study is called the Disability Equity and Engagement Study. And we are gathering some information about the disability community. And we're really focused on learning about the social determinants of health. And how that impacts people's engagement with the city. Uh, who is sponsoring it and why? Sure, yeah. So the I think the city of Portland, um, really this was several years ago, they started realizing that there were not a lot of people with disabilities and, and people with more serious health conditions they that we were as a population not as engaged with the city and and so they started wondering why that was and that was part of what kind of preceded this whole initiative and so the city of portland is actually they're the people who are funding this this uh, study and we as real choice initiative were selected to um, to be the community organization that's going to lead the study and we are also asked to collaborate with the portland state uh, school of government professor up there who is going to be our our number cruncher and do all of the the, the sort of scientific research number crunching of when we actually get the numbers and make all of those things work what is the focus of this study the target of this study is to really get some help when the disability community is all important in gender disabilities in the community. So the focus of the study, Alan said, is for the city of Portland to get an idea of where our community is at in terms of the social determinants of health. We're going to use that information to um, to better understand how how the city can engage with us as a community. To, to better uh, meet our needs as they go forward and make policies about how to interact with us and how to make policies that are going to better support our lives. Mm -hmm. They wanna know what, where we're at and how we're doing so that we can work together. But they're, they're trying to find out what's going on for us and, and you know, what, why we aren't more engaged and, and, um, and how we can become more engaged, what we think should happen in these policies and what we need. And did you say health at the beginning? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Yeah, the, the social determinants of health. And that, social determinants of health. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, exactly what is that? Um, I is 
So Alan said it's housing, it's food, it's health. It's all these different, it's a bunch of different factors that, that really determines how well a person is able to live their life mm -hmm. and the quality of their life. So it, it, it's, it's really something that a lot of people learn about when they go to school to become a medical provider or a social worker. Um, there's, there are other people that learn about these things like Dr. Nisha Sheba probably learned about them when, when she was going to school to learn about this stuff. The Portland State School of Government professor. It's a you know, very science-oriented sort of thing that takes this data and, and says, look, there's no sidewalks and there's no grocery stores and there's no fire departments in this neighborhood. And, and it's no wonder that the people who live there have difficult lives. So it kind of takes all those things and said, we need, to have, we need to have parks, we need to have fire departments, we need to have sidewalks, we need to have grocery stores here, we need to have, you know, all these different things in order to people have, the, you know, there needs to be a library, all this stuff needs to be there in order for people to have good, fulfilled lives. So in other words, this wouldn't be like universal health care or universal housing or universal income or anything else like that. Uh, it would just be some basic environmental proofs with, within the cities, more accessibility around getting around from one place to another place? So, uh, 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 yeah, all of that is part of it. Yeah. Yeah, so like universal basic income and universal health care and universal housing for people, those types of programs would, would very likely improve the, the social determinants of health and, and how people engage and the quality of life people have. And so Alan and I were the people who wrote the questions for this survey. And so we, we really took a lot of effort to make sure that the questions are concise so that people can come in and do the, the questions and move on with their day. And if you are one of the first 100 people to do this survey, you can get a $20 gift certificate. This survey is only for people who are living in the city of Portland. We will also have people available to do the survey with uh, folks over the phone. If you can't do it over the internet, maybe you can't Maybe you can't use the internet for whatever reason, you don't have access, you can't see it or whatever reason you, you need that support. We're gonna have people available to talk over the phone with you and, and fill out the survey for you. So we're really trying to make sure that it's accessible. We've also got translation support available we, because we wanna reach out to people with health concerns and disabilities um, in the Russian community, in the Chinese community, in the African communities. We wanna hear from people in all of our communities in Portland. Uh, when are you guys putting it on? So the study goes live on May 17th, and that's gonna be six weeks. Of the link will be live and people can access it through our website, which is realchoiceoregon.com. We're gonna also be doing a big social media launch um, a little bit, a week or week and a half before the survey opens. And then we're gonna be keeping that social media campaign going the entire time the survey is open. And then, um, and then afterwards, we're really excited about mm -hmm. doing our town hall, which is we're gonna take a couple of weeks after we finish getting all of that survey information from everybody in the city. And we're going to put those initial numbers together with Dr. Nisha Sheba. And then we're going to take that information back to the community members who took the survey. And we're going to say, here's what we got. What do you think? Did we miss anything? And that's going to be a, a huge uh, virtual event. It's going to be all online because we want to keep everyone safe with the pandemic. Um, we're going to welcome everybody that took the survey to come meet online and, and give their feedback about if we missed anything, is there anything else that you feel really needs to be emphasized? And we're going to bring all that information to the city council after we finished all, all of these things. Mm -hmm. So we have a little clip for y'all to listen to. Here we go. All right. And this is, um, this is with Layla Hale and Lids. Um, who are also helping uh, to put together this survey and are going to be some of the survey takers and our social media influencers and just all around amazing individuals. So here's the clip. Thanks, John. Uh, my name is Layla Hale. I use they, them pronouns, and I work for the Office of Equity and Human Rights as their ADA Title II coordinator. 
And I am really excited about this project because uh, I know that data is, you know, the first step in getting done what we need to get done. If the data doesn't exist and the problem doesn't exist. Um, so I'm really excited to be, uh, to assist in being a megaphone to those with power um, to amplify the needs that we know have been in our community for a very long time. Hi, my name is Liz and I also use they, them pronouns. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to be a part of this project. I'm an artist and organizer and my entire goal is to basically help organize all of the stuff that's already happening and make sure that you know, indigenous folks and queer folks and uh, disabled folks and anyone who experiences marginalized identities has voices and doesn't have to rely on people talking for us. So yeah, that's kind of what I do and I'm helping with communication um, and getting the survey out to folks, so yeah. Part of why people have been sent off to places and why people are sent to nursing homes and to other facilities is because the ADA never covered housing, right? So the ADA, they cover when you go into the into the, the common area, right? So they have to cover the bathroom in the lobby, but they don't cover your apartment, right? So your apartment doesn't have to be accessible. And that's something that's got to change. And that's something that I hope that, you know, maybe will come out of this study. The city will understand and start learning about wow there are a lot of people with disabilities living in our city that that are living in places that are inaccessible and they need something better and different and so i'm hoping people will really engage with this study and say look here's what i'm dealing with and i need something else um so that's just something that this city of portland has never asked before really and they're, they're finally realizing they need to ask us what's going on in order to start fixing these problems. Zooming in a little further, the picture is not we need to fix the ADA. The problem is like we need to stop trying to be in compliance with a rule that's almost 30 years old, over 30 years old. That wasn't good enough to begin with. Like the Civil Rights Act didn't pick up uh, folks with disabilities and the ADA didn't pick up housing and we keep leaving out all these things when the answers are just there, they've been there, right? So I feel like this is less of a, we need to figure out how many people like who use wheelchairs aren't voting for like water cleanliness in this bureau, right? Like that's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is folks to say, hey, what is the strategy? What is the direct most effective strategy to take care of everyone? Like, cause as a disability community, we naturally represent so much right? Because there's, you can't, it's inescapable. It's a part of life. Like, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> and Alan said, what I feel like what we're used to as a community is being separated into these different buckets. <laughs> Different dollars and different buckets for different types of disability. Blind, blind folks might get certain number of dollars from Social Security. <laughs> which might be different than someone who's got cerebral palsy or a veteran or an elder yeah. <laughs> and with all these service systems being different and designed specifically per disability <laughs> it makes it really hard for us to develop a strategy. <laughs> and make sure that nobody's getting left out. What I was thinking about when you when you were talking, Layla, is is um 
is I think in general, like what Ellen was saying, you know, we've got everybody split up and it's just like, okay, if you've you got mental health stuff, if you're a veteran, if you're an elder, if you're a child, if you've got IDD, you know, acquired it, all these, you know, all these different buckets. Yeah. And also like in general, um, for strategy speaking, for getting involved with, with doing mutual aid or doing work around civic engagement or, or changing the government or whatever it is where people decide they want to throw their energy, what are the bigger strategies? Is the strategy to show up and say, I said something, I did something, I was there, I marched, I held a sign? Or is there a bigger strategy to it? Is there a strategy to say, I'm doing X, Y, and Z, which will at the end of the strategy be, be that there is housing for 100 people? Or that there is this law that, that mandates that, that X, Y, and Z takes place? You know, whatever, whatever it is, the strategy, right? But I mean, that's a whole complicated thing, right? That, to, to figure out how to do this stuff. And, and I remember one of the last things I, I heard Nick Fish say in a meeting um, when I went to city hall, uh, before he passed was, he said something like, it was like 48% or 52% of Oregonians don't know that there's two senators per state for federal senators. And just knowing that people don't know that there's two senators per state, like, and then getting into like how complex all of these laws and just the city level, like passing a law is so complex and lobbying and showing up and, and sending an email and making a phone call. I mean, even just to like sign up to testify, to be like, hey, y'all are talking about changing the funding system for the police. Like, I would like to see more money going into housing. I would like to see more money going into healthcare, for example. Um, I don't like how it's being sent over the, to cops right now or, or, you know, whatever you have decided you want to work on, right? That's something that a whole lot of people in Portland decided to call in and testify about this last year. Just signing up to testify. That's like a whole process on its own, you know? So it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of work just to be involved in one way or another. And people are like, especially people with disabilities, we're like, y'all, I'm just trying to like, clean my clothes, get some food, like take my meds, try and call to get whatever it is like that's shut off right now, turn back on so I can get through tomorrow, you know, or, you know, whatever it is. What do you think, Liz, what do you, where are you at? Well said, oh my God. Well, I'm just thinking about, let me see if I can say this without cussing. Um, <laughs> no, I'm thinking about how, like, honestly, the biggest lesson, like, I've organized in a lot of different capacities, and I kind of went from, like, grassroots organizing with my neighbors to um, organizing, like, a voting campaign back to, like, heck, with all this, I'm going to go just organize with my neighbors, because when it comes down to it, like we know as disabled people, working class people, like people of color, queer people, we know that our energy is really, really valuable. Like it's really hard to decide how to delegate, like how much time we're gonna be spending on different things. And we need to know what the impact is gonna be. And a lot of people that I organize with aren't voting anymore because why would they spend all this time educating themselves on like a gamble of a politician or measure that they haven't read or can't you know access because it's not accessible language when they could put that much amount of time into like mutual aid and community aid and like people on like the reservation like my grandma grew up on are like dealing with COVID like so much right now why would I give a heck about who's running for some you know mm -hmm, it's really hard to prioritize that and like what's really exciting to me about this study is we can put numbers behind that sentiment like we can say like this is why this is important to us like our immediate need for food and shelter clean water like safety like that is more important than who might make a rule in three years where we get 600 bucks one time it's just not tangible. So I'm excited to have numbers behind that sentiment personally. Not sure if that's exactly what we're talking about here, but that's where I'm going with it. So thanks for letting me uh, go off a little bit. 
thank you. That's that's exactly what we're talking about. Thank you for saying that. You know. Yeah, I feel like this is um, definitely for me like <clears throat> part of a larger strategy. Like it can't for me end with numbers. Like that would be like the most self defeating thing ever if we just ended with, you know. A nice like survey monkey printout of like these percentages and pie charts and like okay cool like i feel like the the town hall that happens after we like both share back in the information and have the opportunity to connect and strategize as a community um i see it as very much as like a, a jumping off point for something like um the people's plan that uh, palf which is now imagine black uh put together that was where they surveyed the like uh, a wide sampling of like the black community in Portland and beyond and uh, like presented like a people's plan based on that information. Um, so I see this not only as like, this is the civic engagement. It's not just a survey to see like, why aren't you gonna vote? Like it's hi, hello, we're gathering information. And also let's do the thing, right? Like I feel like Lizzie said earlier, like, hi, I'm here, where's the fire? <laughs> Like, um, and I see like, that's definitely like my role as a civil servant. And like, you know, I still very much see myself as like an activist and organizer. Like, I want this to be a conduit for like, tell me what to tell my bosses to do. How do I be the most radical change that I can be? And this is the blueprint, right? This is the data-driven measure where I say, okay, here's our scientific and historical data that says this is what we should be doing right now. You can't tell me I can't have this program because the people said that this is what they need. Alan said, yeah, I think that that was an important factor in the development of this project. We we wanted to make sure that it was not only inclusive of all of our different communities, but also that it was truly accountable to all of our different communities. <laughs> Because we as a, as a disability community are used to having these very um, focus group models. <laughs> Which would be great if you could get uh, a truly representative group together. <laughs> What I see, though, is more homogenous. <laughs> what I see usually is more white people with disabilities. <laughs> and parents who talk for people with disabilities. <laughs> And we really want to hear from people with disabilities themselves. <laughs> and do whatever we can to accommodate them. Us. To accommodate us. To, to be able to provide the information that will best support our communities. Um, so, yeah, the, the science from the beginning was to have a hall. So, we designed the study from the beginning to have a town hall. And we worked with the coalition of communities of color. We worked uh, closely with the coalition of communities of color. <laughs> and they were the ones that really taught us about this idea of bringing the data back to the community. <laughs> so that we can interpret it as a community. 
we caught the nuances. And to really make sure that we've caught all of the nuances in the, in the data. So, so I really thank you for that town hall event. So I'm really looking forward to that town hall event. And hearing from participants of the, of the survey. This is John Griffiths. This has been Disability Justice and Everyday Pursuit and Survival. Thanks for joining us today and come back soon.